Dear students, today we will be discussing data compression. So until now, we have learned that how to store data, whether it's a numerical form, textual form, or images, sound, etc. So now the time has arrived that we should learn some of the strategies that how we can store data inside the computer system by compressing it so that it can take little amount of uh, little space within the computer system. So in fact, there are two major categories of storing or compressing data. So one is known as lossless, in which there is no loss of data. And the other is called lossy technique that may loss data. So if we further elaborate lossless techniques, here we are interested to retain the original data as it is. So original data can be reconstructed from complex data. So examples are you might have used zip file format. So you have a number of files, you uh, use the zip software to zip it and then at the end when you unzip that data you need the same original data so you are not uh, expecting to lose some of the data then if you have source code the written code of computer science programs some in programming language you have text documents you have executable uh, programs so all of these type of data you need to reconstruct after compressing so that's why we call it lossless so there is no loss in the data when compressing so the next is lossy techniques so original data cannot be reconstructed from compressed data only approximation is possible so we are going to compress the data and we do not want to see or we do not want to retain the original data when we decompress so such kind of techniques are used in multimedia data especially audio video images and especially in the applications like streaming media then there is another kind of techniques known as run run length encoding so these are suitable where the long sequence have same values like Three nine hundred ones followed by three hundred zeros. So instead of storing nine hundred ones and then three hundred zeros, we can just say that this kind of data have nine hundred one and three hundred zero. So such an information can be said within a very small amount of space. And then the next thing is frequency dependent encoding. So length of the bit pattern used to represent a data item is inversely related to the frequency of the items used and they have variable length codes and such variable length codes have been uh, developed and credited to Hoffman and the codes which have been built by Hoffman are called Hoffman codes. So what are those Hoffman codes? Let's see. In English language, characters A, T, A, I are most frequent than Z, Q, X. So, using smaller bit pattern to represent E, T, A, I would save the space. Then there is another approach called relative encoding or differential encoding. So, stream of data differs only slightly from the previous ones. For example, in motion picture. So in motion picture, if you are uh, want to compress the uh, video, so you know that video is uh, can be constructed by number of small frames of images. So if you want to compress, so you just need to store that what is the difference between a frame number zero and frame number one, and then what is the difference or change in frame number one to frame number two. So you just need to save that change and the whole picture can be stored once. So record differences rather than storing the whole form uh, frame again. Then there is another approach called dictionary encoding. 
stored just a reference to a dictionary, term not the whole word, especially used by word processors as they have already dictionary for spell check. So, such kind of approach uh, is also known as adoptive dictionary encoding, in which dictionary dynamically change over time. When, we lar when a large unit is found, it is added in the actual dictionary. One example is Lampel Ziv Welsh, LZW encoding. So let's see what is this encoding over here. So you can see that we have such information. We want to store XYZ space, XYZ space and so on. So let's say we encode X as 1, Y as 2 and Z as 3 and this space as 4. So as it is adoptive, it will see that again XYZ has arrived. So it will give it one code like 5 and then there is a space which has 4, then 5, then 4. So this means you are not going to store three characters or three codes for X, Y, Z. Instead, you are just storing one character that is 5 against X, Y, Z. So, in such a way, it is learning adoptively, it is learning at the runtime, and then it is storing a lot of space. So, let's summarize today's module. We have learned the compression techniques. We have learned that what are generic data compression techniques, lossless and lossy techniques and LZW with a suitable example.